today I want to tell you of an acquaintance of mine. I can't, I can't really call her a friend because the only time that I see her is when she's in the hospital. She's not a very old woman. She's probably in her late 40s, maybe early 50s, but she's severely diabetic and the disease has created any number of other issues so that she's primarily confined to her bed. Usually when I saw her, she was cheerful and pretty much accepting of her difficult position. But in my last visit, you could tell there was something different. She was tired, she was depressed. We, we prayed a little while and I said to her, you know, we're taught that God never gives us more than we can handle. And it seems like you have an awfully heavy load. He must really think highly of you to allow you to carry such a heavy burden. She looked at me a little bewildered, and so I explained, one day when you're in heaven, so many people will come up to you and say thank you, and you'll say, why do you say thank you? I don't even know who you are. And they'll say, because of your suffering, we were able to come into heaven. For when we join our sufferings to the sufferings of Jesus, we are participating in his wonderful act of redemption. Did you ever think of that when you're laying sick in your bed, that you are sharing with Jesus in the salvation of the world? And we find that the more we help Jesus to carry his cross, the more he will be with us to help us carry ours. Today we're celebrating the Feast of the Baptism of Jesus. This baptism isn't a sacramental baptism of of fire and Holy Spirit as is ours. It's a baptism of water, a baptism of repentance. So we might wonder why Jesus, who we know was without sin, would want to even or have to go through a baptism of repentance. I've read a variety of explanations, and the one that I like best is because, well, because his mother asked him to, and because he was a duty, dutiful and obedient son, he gladly agreed. But really, I think, I think there's a much deeper meaning to this baptism. When Jesus stepped into the waters of the Jordan River, he did not step into man's sentiments. However, with this baptism of repentance, he willingly accepted to fully share in the consequences of our sinfulness. God doesn't send us suffering, we suffer because of sin. With this baptism, Jesus tells us in effect that he is one with us in this suffering. He tells us that he is fully human, not because he shares in our sin, but because he shares in the suffering that is caused by our sin. And he does suffer, doesn't he? He suffers so as to repent for the sins of the whole world. Suffering is a part of our reality in this life. We suffer for our own individual sins, and we also suffer for the sins of the world, Sins like injustice, poverty, persecution. You know, as we learn more and more about this world of ours, we learn how actually everything is so closely connected. When something happens in one part of the world, it eventually has an effect on other parts of the world. Take, for example, the polar ice cap. Changes that take place there have a ripple effect on other parts of the world, like rising weather levels and changes in weather patterns. And it's like that with us people, too. When one thing happens in one part of the world, it's bound to have a ripple effect on the rest of us, Some, sometimes in obvious ways, like the mass migration from war-torn or crime-ridden countries. And sometimes it has an effect in ways that we haven't yet discovered. But we know that there is an effect because we are all connected. And that's why there will always be suffering in the world because there will always be sin in the world. And sin has its consequences. The problem is, the suffering caused by sin doesn't confine itself to the people that committed the sin, but like the lava from a volcano, it spews its poison indiscriminately to anyone in its path. And that's why the baptism of Jesus is so important. In this baptism of repentance, he opened himself up to fully share in our humanity to be with us in our own human suffering. And then, with his passion, his death and resurrection, he raised that suffering from the level of repentance to the level of redemption. When we are baptized, we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and in fire. In our baptism, we die to sin and are reborn again into the life of the Holy Spirit. 
The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that we are acquitted of original and personal sin, we begin a new life in Christ and the Holy Spirit, and we are incorporated into the body of Christ. Thus, as co-heirs of Christ, the suffering with which we are visited with in this life is given meaning and purpose. For when we unite our suffering to the suffering of Jesus, we share not only in a very human act of repentance, but in a very divine act of redemption. I lay us as come, comfort, give comfort to my people. After Jesus was baptized and he was praying, he was giving comfort in what I would call a God moment. You know what I call a God moment? God moment is a time when you know, body, soul, and spirit, that God is present with you right there. Did, did you ever have an experience, a God moment like that? I, I know I have. Luke tells us that the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came down from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This was an affirmation of this baptism of repentance, and I can't help but think that Jesus was able to remember this special moment of unity with his Father and the Holy Spirit in the difficult and trying times of his ministry. In our prayer, too, we can find comfort and affirmation even in the midst of our suffering. For we know that Jesus, <coughs> in union with the Father and the Holy Spirit, is with us even in these moments of darkness. And we can be assured that the suffering that we may have to endure in this life has meaning and purpose beyond our own, our own personal need for repentance. That through his grace, it is joined to his act of redemption for the whole world and that we too will one day partake in that unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we will hear the voice say, This is my beloved Son, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. 